I'm here with the man with the magic mixing fingers, DJ Hype. You actually started life at the Heatwave sound system in North London? Um, yeah, it was Shut Up and Dance back in the early 80s. How do you think the music compares now to then? Um, it's, I just think today's music is a melting pot of old music with a little bit of technology thrown in. So, although it's different in a lot of ways, it's similar in others. I've gone from everything from ska to reggae to hip hop, rare groove. Everything, like all kind of music, it's not like one love with me. I play jungle drum and bass around the globe, but I personally, I listen to all music. You're well known for your scratching. You know, usually when I play out, people are always like, do more, do more, but I try and keep it to a minimum because I'm a drum and bass jungle DJ, not a scratch mix DJ. I incorporate a bit of that because I used to do competition mixing years ago, but I don't do a lot of it. You know, I know people sort of know me for that, and I suppose it's like a little stamp so that I, they know who I am, but I don't sort of get carried away with it at all. If anything, I say I don't do enough. You actually started off as a bedroom DJ and now you've taken over the club world. How does that feel? Um, I don't know. I think, you know, I've been doing it so long now that it's great, but it's hard for me to go, yeah, it's really great because I played here and I played there. I mean, in the last few weeks, we've been globally, you know, Holland, Switzerland tomorrow, Germany last week, Scotland, you know, we're going to Japan. And it's a yearly thing like that, travelling around. It's very hard work. So although it is enjoyable, it's hard to get really excited because half the time you're very tired from the night before. Do the crowds outside the UK understand drum and bass as much as the Brits? No, they're the same. I just think basically going to different countries, you know, um, some countries it's more popular than others. But in the last two years, I think most of the DJs have been pretty much everywhere. So they, it's made the music grow. I mean, I was like two hours from Berlin on Monday night and it was like, fantastic you know tomorrow I go to Switzerland it'll be wicked I did a tour of Holland you know Italy Milan you know everywhere is firing you go to Canada you get like 5,000 people 2,000 people queuing up to two in the morning you know so I know it's globally massive and in, like, in England it's still big it's just that in England it's been there a long time it's kind of leveled out you know there's there's not like millions of clubs there's just the key clubs you also record as a ganja crew what have you got planned at the moment We've got a Ganja Coup album probably scheduled for later on this year if we get the time to finish it. We've got a free track, Ganja Crew. Um, it's not an EP, it's more like a mini album. It's like a lead up to the album, just a taster, and that's probably coming in the next couple of months. That'll be on a treble 12 vinyl and a CD. So, and that's all coming out on True Players because we're, we've gone back like, to independency now. We haven't been, like, we've ended our deal with RCA and we're not pursuing another deal at this moment. Like We're just independent. You know, We had an album out, just a compilation last year that done really well. This year we're going to probably do an artist album. You're more relaxed when you do it independently. You know, I think unless you're a pop group or you want to be that kind of act, it's not really worth signing with a major. I mean, we do lots of remixes from everybody from All Saints, Natalie and Bruglia, Prodigy, Jay-Z, Foxy Brown, Missy Elliott. You know, we're doing the Beastie Boys, we've just done Underworld. So, Without signing to a major, we're working within all these different people anyway. You know, our man Van El, we've done them all. You know, I actually met our man Van El in a kiss and forgot that I'd remixed his tune, you know, and he was thanking me for it and I was looking at him like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, so we've got no shortage of work.